Do you ever have so many thoughts in your head and you just have such a heavy heart and there's just so much inside that you just want to, I don't know, like, bleh. <laughs> oh my gosh, over, over the past two and a half years, what a roller coaster ride. What a roller coaster ride I've been on and we've been on. Anybody who was in, you know, Torchlight, Metamaterials, MMAT, or MMTLP. Um, it's been a battle. It's become so much more than just one ticker or three tickers. <laughs> um, you know, it was said that MMTLP was the litmus test for the market, right? We would know. How corrupt things are and and I was hoping that you know the litmus test would come back in in our favor and that I could have faith in the United States capital markets that that something would go right that maybe the corruption isn't as deep and systemic um, as we thought it was but I was wrong I was wrong. I was. I, I mean, I, I had so much faith in the system. I've had so much faith in systems, so multiple systems, um, that there would be processes where when something wrong happens, something bad, um, something corrupt, don't mind my dog drinking her water, um, that there would be those systems in place to protect people. Um, you know, I'm a social worker. So that's kind of like my world, right? You know, when things aren't right and, and when people are being hurt, you know, we, we go and we try and fix those systems. And never, never would I have thought that in my journey to try and fix those systems, I would be personally attacked. Um, I would be labeled a conspiracy theorist, a pumper. Um, so, so many, so many things. And I see the pain that people are going through. I've seen people, you know, lose their sobriety. Um, I've seen people, you know, who are struggling with their own medical um, issues who, who came to the market to try and um, find companies that they believed in, that they believed that, that they would do good things, right? And so they wanted to invest in those companies get in early, they did their due diligence. Um, and and that's the thing is these, these companies, right? If they come in early, they come in because they're trying to raise capital. Um, that's, that's what the market's designed for. But if you're not a blue chip stock, if you're a small cap stock and you need, you need money for your company, that puts a target on your back. If you have to go through the FDA approval process, they know the timeline, that puts a target on your back. And when I say they, I say these short hedge funds who predatorily short companies into bankruptcy for multiple reasons. They can do it because they wanna make money or they can do it because they want to do a hostile takeover. You're a competitor. I mean, there's, there's so many reasons. And the regulators that are supposed to protect these companies and retail investors, and they're involved in it. They're involved with the corruption that these hedge funds are engaging in. We, we have emails um, where they know that there's fraud going on and they don't protect retail investors. We know that they don't have a problem with companies being destroyed. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart, you know? Because there's so many people out there I mean, and I see it, and there's so many people um, that are starting to see it or have seen it. I mean, there's people who've been fighting this fight for long before I fought this fight. But people are starting to wake up to it. And I sit here and I think, you know, sorry, my hand is shaking. I'm, I'm like ghetto. I'm going to rest it on my kids' Honey Nut Cheerios. Yeah, it's the generic because we shop at Walmart and we get the generic stuff because... Because, you know, not everybody is the 1%. Um, so I'm going to rest it against that because I was getting a little shaky. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, yes. 
So, um, you know, awareness is spreading and, and that's an interesting thing. So you look at historically, um, how information has been spread. You know, there was a point in time, I wrote a tweet about this a while ago. There was a point in time where, um, they were trying to prevent people from learning to read, um, because that shares information and knowledge is power, right? Um, the printing press, oh my gosh, how did, how did that change things? And so social media is like a new way for people to share information and um, and for me and many others, Twitter has become the mechanism in which we can share information about things that we see that are wrong. Um, and, you know, historically, if somebody was in a company that maybe was a good company, um, and then maybe there was a, a short report that came out against that company to disparage them, and then you would get, um, <laughs> like, ambulance chasing law firms. I have one in my head that I won't say. Um, then they'll, you know, do a class action and they, and they, they not only short companies with counterfeit shares that are illegal, but it's not like being enforced and there's workarounds. Like you can just send your short position overseas and then it's not counted and then you can just short more. Yes, we know that happens, but, um, you know, they'll, they'll do the, the short, um, report and then you'll have the lawsuits, they inundate them with lawsuits, which compromises the capital, which is already, you know, they already came to the market because they needed money. And then, and then they go on social media and they attack people. I mean, I, I understand that there's people who want to manipulate the market on both ends of the spectrum, right? You've got people who will engage in pump and dumps, and then you've got people who will predatorily short. But to be that mindful middle, right? To find a company that you believe in and then to have people come on social media and just try and rip you apart and try and, I mean, like the mental gymnastics that happen, it's, it's insane. And they actually hire companies to go and to spread this false information. And then they, they can hire media outlets. And I'm just, I'm so disheartened because I knew, I knew it was going to happen with this Forbes article. Um, <sighs> You know, we already knew, we already knew that that there seemed to be pay-to-play media, or maybe pay-to-play is not the right word. There was there was media that seemed seemingly was paid off because they were very biased. It seemed, um, particularly seeking alpha and um, investor place, and um, and and you know those old games weren't working anymore because we've we've organized on social media. We've um, created a community where we spread awareness and we have the facts to back it up. We have the facts. We have the FOIA. We have we have so much information and it's problematic to um, these predatory short hedge funds that have created all these counterfeit shares. But they have their tentacles in everything. They have their tentacles in politics and you know maybe they needed to up their game, right? So they did. They upped their game as far as you know MMTLP is concerned. They they sent James Angel in to give a presentation. Supposedly he was a retail investor. Um, probably said he was from Torch because we know that he um, he wrote for Seeking Alpha and he wrote an article um, encouraging people to short um, small cap gas and oil stocks right around when we believe he had a relationship with GTS, which is the, the main uh, hedge fund that was shorting Torchlight Energy, that gas and oil company that I refer to so much, um, why GTS was doing it, maybe because if they can, you know, short it into bankruptcy, then they never have to, you know, close those short positions, pay taxes, they make a lot of money, or maybe it's because some of their biggest clients were Chevron and Exxon, and maybe they wanted the assets. I don't, I don't know. I don't know for sure. We just know that GTS was involved, right? And we know that um, James Angel has a relationship with them. And uh, and we know that he holds the patent for dark pools and that he's an advocate for um, proof of order flow, PFOS. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I guess I guess he, uh, I don't know what the relationship is, but there's, there's some ties to Bernie Madoff as well. And so just... You know, they brought him in and, you know, he painted the community. He disparaged metamaterials. And then I went to D.C. 
And that's what I heard back. That's what was parroted back to me by the staffers, that there wasn't an issue with the short positions not closing, that, that Meta Materials was nefarious, that, that we were mistaken. What if it's not the way you see it? You know, I hate the gaslighting. I hate the gaslighting because I know, I know what I know and I have the facts to back it up. Um, it's, it's really tough. And then, you know, so we know that they got to our congressional representatives and it, you know what, maybe that's, maybe that speaks to um, our organizing on social media, right? It's, it sucks because it's a great resource and we can share ideas, but then at the same time we're sharing ideas, right? And we know that bad actors are listening to those ideas and it sounds freaking insane. It sounds so insane, the words that I am saying. And so it's easy for them to, to paint us as insane as a community because who, who in their right mind would have ever thought that it would get to where it is? I like, I never, three years ago, if you had told me that I would be like championing, championing, can't talk, um, fair markets, and then I would be going to Washington trying to talk to as many um, congressional representatives, particularly those on the House Financial Services Committee, then I would be dressed up in a uh, Liberty costume at a rally in front of the SEC, I would have been like, you're freaking nuts, right? But I can't sit by when I see something that's not right. You know, like I said, I'm a social worker. And, and part, of, part of that is that I identify vulnerable populations that are being exploited and I see it, I see it. I mean, I'm part of a military community and I see you know, what's happening and how it compromises, not just, you know, the retirement system, the TSP, but I see how it compromises the structure of our economy um, and, and national security. Um, <laughs> you know, it sounds nuts, it sounds nuts, but you wanna know what one of the most effective things that we did when we were trying to combat ISIS? I know, I sound, I, this is where I'm starting to sound nuts, but I'm not. Um, you know, we did have boots on the ground, but taking away their financial resources, right? So if any other country wants to destabilize us or, you know, take over control of our assets or whatever, they have the mechanism in which to do that. And that would be through counterfeit shorting. And, and if you say, okay, counterfeit shorting doesn't exist, well, why are we not getting these blue sheets for MMTLP? Why, why can't we have the information? You can redact all you want, all the um, personal information. We don't need that. Um, why are they so hell-bent not to get that to us? Why, why all the great lengths that we've seen? I mean, the only thing that it does is confirm to me that we're right. And I know we are. Um, but, you know, each day, each day that this goes on, because we're going on like almost 140 days, right? Each day this goes on, people, um, you know, they lose their homes. Um, their relationships are compromised. I mean, this is stressful. This is, this is so, so stressful. And, you know, I, I keep thinking like, you know, maybe, maybe I can't handle it. And I've had, I've had my breakdowns. I have, I've been to really dark places. And um, particularly when, when you realize how broken the system is and you feel like you're just one person, but I know I'm not just one person because I have a whole community behind me. And, um, you know, this has impacted so many people and it's so, apparent um, and visible and and it's going to be really interesting to see because they can't keep the truth hidden forever the light is coming it's coming there's so many things in the works right now and so for me i'm sitting back because like i don't want to burn any bridges that could be helpful but i also want those people who who may have the power to help us to realize that the truth is going to come out and they have an opportunity now to be on the right side of history. I mean, we're compiling our list of, you know, the people who have been helpful. And it doesn't necessarily even mean that they have to be pushing, pushing our cause, like, or, or saying, yeah, you know, you're, you're right in the MMTLP community. Even if they're just wanting the information to make a non, an unbiased decision, like, let's just get these blue sheets so we can make an unbiased decision, right? If, if my community is wrong, then, you know, we're wrong and that sucks.
but we're wrong and you know that'll shut us that'll shut us up so much faster than this hit piece forbes article and um, then all of the the bullying and antics on social media and the personal attacks um getting your your guy that worked for finra and has a patent for dark pools and is so freaking compromised having him go before congress which i wouldn't be surprised if they paid him for it um I'm talking about Congress because I know sometimes they do. If somebody else paid him for it, I actually wouldn't be surprised about that either, but I don't know. Um, it's coming to light. And so, you know, you've got, you've got a choice to make. Um, you can either be that champion for the people as you've taken an oath to do so, or, you know, it's your job or you're a regulatory official. You know, do you want to be in that house as it burns down? Um, because it is. It is with the, the sharing of information and the age that we are now moving into, we are not naive retail investors. We're aware of what's going on. We have the information to prove what's going on to an extent, but we're working on the rest of it. And so we know that that's coming. You know that that's coming. So you have very limited time to do what's right. And I implore anyone who has the opportunity to be a champion of good whether it be to write unbiased stories, whether it be to you know do your regulatory job, whether it be to represent your constituents and uphold you know the the fundamental um, truths of this country where people you know expect these free and fair markets free. I'm not saying like free like you don't have to pay a, a fee, but I mean like as in free from the corruption that we're seeing. You, you have an opportunity to fight for good and your time is running up and history, history will write your story and you're going to be in this story. It just depends on what, what part of the story you're in. And so I don't know what else to say. My heart is just heavy. It's been a long journey. It's been a long journey and I've seen so much suffering from people that I care so deeply, so deeply about. I see their pain and you know, they, they, they take it in and they internalize it as something that they've done wrong. And, and that speaks to, to what we see, um, the bullying and all that stuff on social media and they they want us to internalize it and they want us to be weak and they want us to hurt because then, then we're too exhausted and we step away from the fight. Um, unfortunately I can't step away from the fight and <laughs> You know, there's that fine line between passion and obsession. And um, I just hope, I just hope that people who can help do the right thing. And this is much longer than I thought it would be, but um, that's all. Thank you for listening. <laughs>